everybody. Welcome to JC Live, your weekly source for JCL news and fun. I'm your host, Mr. Kurt Ristroff, Publications Chair for the National Junior Classical League, an organization for and of middle and high school students in classical courses. How's everybody doing today? I hope you had a good Monday. With me today is our special guest and featured uh Featured guest, I suppose I should say, Vivian Wu from New York State. Vivian, how's it going? Pretty good. Senior is a little, a little hectic. Yeah, busy day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, me too. But here we are. We get a chance to just hang out, uh, talk to some friends. We've got folks joining in on the chat. Uh, Well, welcome. Welcome, everybody. We've got a good show for you tonight. We'll be talking with Vivian about all kinds of things. Um, YouTube is giving me some weird notifications. I don't know what that's about. Oh, that's that's new. Okay, so some live stream things on YouTube have changed. Nothing to worry about. It's all good. Yeah, we'll just hang out for about um, 45 minutes or so and get to know Vivian a little bit better. What uh, her plans for this year in office are going to be. And of course, uh, her JCL trajectory, how she got to be here, how she got to be elected as National Historian of the National Junior Classical League. It's always fun to talk with student officers. As always, if you've got any questions for me or for Vivian throughout the entire uh, extent of the show, do put those in the chat. Uh, we've already got some some chats. Uh, Martina Bright says, go team historian, woo team historian. Martina Bright, a former NJCL historian from uh, from days gone by. But, you know, once a JC, once an NJCL officer, always an NJCL officer. Martina, it's great to have you on. Susan Shearer says, Salve, Vivian. I've been keeping up the history of NJCL for decades and hope that we're on the same page. Miss Susan Shearer, yes, the living history of JCL um, has really compiled a very impressive document and continues to keep it updated. I believe works with the historians uh, each year to, to include things like uh, keeping the, the officer's names and everything up to date. So, um, well, Vivian, we're going to, um, we're going to start a little bit with, uh, or start for now with, uh, the announcements while people are joining in. So for those of you who are in the chat, um, we keep changing the format of the show a little bit cause we want to try and get everything, uh, as optimal as possible. So, Vivian's going to hang out with us while we do the announcements at the beginning. And then at the end, um, we're going to have our officer reports from Rice and Lindy, who are the the officers giving reports this week. So while I pull those up, um, Vivian, can you take a look at the chat? Are they saying anything? I got to pull the the announcements up. Aaron Wilson just said, yes, stand historians, which I completely agree with. What does what does that mean? Could you explain that for the old folks in the audience, like me? <laughs> it's kind of like we stand them, like we're we're like fans, so kind of. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, but it's a verb. Yeah. All right, got it. Do you, do you know where that comes from? Not exactly. Okay. Honestly, I'm not very hip with the kids myself. Well. I understand that. Um, okay, Riona Duncan says, all we have to say right now is that we love you, Vivian. I understood that one. <laughs> Great. <laughs> okay, so before we start talking to Vivian full-time, let's go through some announcements. First of all, join JCL. I think everybody. I think I know everybody in the chat and everybody's part of JCL. So, um, But in case you're watching this or watching the replay and days or weeks to come, and you're unfamiliar with JCL, the National Junior Classical League is an organization for middle and high school students in classical courses. We've got an incredible community. We've got um, lots of competitions that help students develop their skills. We've got opportunities for leadership development. We've got a really, really welcoming community all across the country. So uh, consider joining JCL. And if you have any questions about how to join or who to talk to or how to get involved in your state or local chapter or how to start a state or local chapter, uh, you can contact me or you can use the link in the description about joining JCL. And if you join JCL this year, the national office has a lot of extra swag that they are giving away. So you could win a water bottle or a sticker or a JCL pen or something like that. So, uh, Register your JCL chapter if you're a teacher or parent, and you may be the recipient of one of these wonderful uh, bits of merchandise. Up next, 
folks we are collecting well you know we talked about how miss susan Shearer and vivian are both in their own way stewards of the jcl history one of the things that i'm trying to collect this year uh, for a different project is a bunch of jcl memories so if you've been in jcl for a while and you have a favorite memory some quintessentially jcl moment that makes you think like oh you know in 20 years when i've been out of jcl and out of high school for a long time like that's what i'm gonna think about when i think of jcl i want to know about that and i'd love if you would write it write about it and let me know uh, for our book. We're putting together a book of JCL memories. You can click on the link here. The link's in the description. It's a clickable link. And let us know what your uh, favorite memory is by... No and if you... The deadline is is rolling. You know, I'll, I'll accept entries after November 15th. But if you submit a memory by November 15th, then you will be entered into a raffle to win a t-shirt or another piece of JCL swag. So go ahead and do that. Okay. Um... Vivian, why don't you take this one? All right. Um, submit October photo of the month. It's due the last day of the month, um, 31st. Uh, you can submit on at the website njcl.org slash students slash non-convention contest. It's, you scroll down to photo of the month, and there'll be a link uh, for a Google form to submit your photo. And yeah, you can submit until the 31st. So what do you photo of the month. <laughs> What are you looking for in a photo of the month? Like what makes a winning photo of the month? Honestly, anything that can represent the JCL spirit. I know that's kind of vague, but right now it's kind of vague because we can't exactly endorse um, activities that aren't socially distanced. So you can submit photos of Zoom calls. You can submit photos of people wearing masks, holding stuff. It's not going to be the same as previous years, but I will take that into account while ju uh, when judging the photos. And who's eligible to submit to this? Is this an individual thing, a state chapter thing? Um, one per chapter. So anyone who's part of the JCL can submit as long as it's one per chapter. Okay. All right. Thank you. Up next, uh, it is October, and every month comes with a different Club of the Month theme. So we just talked about Photo of the Month. Now we're going to talk about Club of the Month, which is another non-convention contest. So these are um, con contests that run throughout the year. Of course, we've got a lot of competitions and contests that happen at our annual national convention, which is in July. It's not July right now. Does that mean there's no JCL? Of course it doesn't. Uh, it means that there, it's time for non-convention contests. And one of those other non-convention contests is... Um, the club of the month. So every month there's a theme. This is put out by our uh, second vice president, Lindy Raining, who's going to actually be on the call later to talk about this, so I won't take too long with it. Um, but October's theme is to do stuff outdoors. Um, of course, you know, with the appropriate safety measures uh, that are are in place in your community, but um, there are plenty of things that you can do JCL activities that you can do while remaining safe. So things like uh, raking leaves for people who aren't able to or collecting litter or uh, everybody go in your front yard or backyard and try and do it or go out to a, um, a gym or somewhere with a basketball goal and shoot some trick shots, you know, try and get that on video, all that kind of stuff. So these are uh, ideas for the outdoor theme of October for Club of the Month. And um you don't have to stick to the theme. You can still enter your club as a club of the month uh, competitor without necessarily doing one of these activities, but uh, these are some ideas to guide you along. Okay. Susan Shearer says, Kurt, would you like some old Susan Shearer t-shirts to give away as JCL swag? Oh my God. Those are, those are worth their weight in gold. That's some valuable stuff. Wow. Ah, I will I will email you about that. That is a fantastic suggestion. Last announcement before we start talking to Lindy full time, or um, I'm sorry, Vivian full time. Lindy's going to be on later. Is um, the general stream rules? Please don't spam the chat. Nobody ever spams the chat, so that's not a problem. Uh, we're ticking our way up to the 1,000 subscriber count. At which point we're going to be raffling off merchandise, maybe including some old JCL T-shirts from. Uh, the legend Susan Shearer herself. We'll see about that. And an advertisement for next week's show. Next week, we're going to be doing one of our first panel discussions with alumni. So the goal of these panel discussions is to uh, contact JCL alumni. So people who were in JCL when they were in high school, 
and have gone to various professions and bring them on. So next week, we'll be talking to former JCLers who are now scientists. We've got uh, a biochemist, a computational and quantitative biologist, and a chemist who are going to come on and talk about their career paths, um, their, their journey from JCL to their current careers, and uh, give advice and things like that. So that's going to be next week's show from JCL to science. And we've got a lot of these planned for throughout the year. You know, we've got from JCL to medicine, from JCL to law, from JCL to classics, of course, will be one of them, um, and several others. Um, if you know anybody who is in JCL and has gone on to engineering, let me know, because so far we only have one panelist for from JCL to engineering, and it's me. Um, there's a, a Michigan professor actually that we may try and bring on too, but he might be too busy. So we'll see about that. Um, but if you have any ideas for panel discussions or panelists, let me know. You can let me know all of this feedback. Every time I'm saying, let me know, you can use the link in the description to, um, to give feedback. So there's a feedback form. And one of the feedback uh, form entries from last week said, hey, why don't you ask the chat more questions so they can have the, you know, a, a lively discussion in the chat. So chat, the question I'm posing to you now to be more interactive is uh, what kind of panel discussions would you like to see with JCL alumni? What professions or fields would you be interested in hearing from? Uh, discuss. Okay, and while that's going on, let us switch things back on over to Vivian. And of course, I forgot to say, if you have anything in the chat that you urgently need to tell me or need me to read, uh, do tag me at National Junior Classical League or at NJCL Social Media, and uh, I'll be more likely to see it. Otherwise, I'm not gonna be able to see everything the whole time. Okay, so Vivian, welcome, welcome, welcome. So glad you could join us. Um, why don't we start off um, could you introduce yourself? Could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi, um, I'm Vivian Wu. I am from Long Island, New York. Um, I am your 2020 to 2021 NJCL historian. Um, what, what else do you want to know? Well, um, what are what is uh, what's your favorite JCL memory? That's that's topical. We talked about our, our book project. What's the most quintessentially JCL memory that you've got? Probably my, in, after ninth grade, I went to my first convention. Um, I was the only New Yorker there and I actually ended up dorming with, I think, Connecticut or Pennsylvania. I don't know. I mix those two states up. Um, and I ended up having to dorm with them because I had no teacher. And I remember everyone was just so welcoming. Like, I never felt alone the whole time. I know it's like a, a whole week, but the whole experience was just really great because I made some really good friends. Um, and I really didn't expect that good of an experience because I was by myself. Okay. Um, that that takes a lot of, you know, courage to be the only one. Which nationals was that? Um, 2018. What? It was in Which Miami was University. That? Miami, Ohio. Okay. So probably the closest to you geographically of the recent ones. Okay, so you came out to Ohio and you were all by yourself and you were the only delegate from New York. What, why did you decide to go to a national convention? Honestly, it was just a random thing. I remember seeing it online and I was like, okay, I'll register. I'm free that week. Um, and then I just, I just went. I don't, I, I don't know why. I just felt like it was the right thing to do at the time. Okay, so so how did you get involved in JCL to begin with? You know, New York, um, particularly Long Island, I don't think we've got an awful lot of chapters out there, which is weird because a lot of the big population states, your Texas, your Florida, your New Jersey, your Massachusetts, we've got big booming JCLs in New York, uh, not so much these days. So um, how'd you find about how'd you find out about JCL? Um, well, I started taking Latin ninth grade, which is kind of late, but my school doesn't offer it until ninth grade. I mean, I think that's the same thing with a lot of public schools in Long Island. So most kids won't start until ninth grade. Um, and I like, I think the way I found it was because I had gotten into Keir Tommen that year mm. and I had competed in a local tournament. It was Stony Brook University. It's a local state school here. Um, and I remember wanting to compete it more. So I remember searching up like Kirtaman, Kirtaman Latin, and I found NJCL and I saw they had Kirtaman there. 
And so I like, I was intrigued. I wanted to join and before I knew it, I went to nationals that summer. Yeah. So did you get a chance to play Kurtaman at nationals? Where, oh, no, no, I was by myself and I was kind of scared. So. Gotcha. Now I don't know for things like open Kurtaman at nationals. Can you join with other states, you know, make a, a hybrid team? I'm not sure probably, but I, I did not have the guts to do it. Okay. <laughs> and I, and I honestly didn't know too much because I'd only finished Latin one. Um, so. I mean, uh, this is, this is a normal thing. It, it's perfectly understandable. If, of course, have you played Kurtam in a national since? Like, have you gotten a chance to no. ever? <laughs> okay. Well, you know, um, everybody, Vivian Liu, uh, Wu is looking for a teammate to play Kurtam. <laughs> so if you're, uh, if you're a three person team at the, um, I guess at the upper level now, right? Because you've taken an AP. Now, if yeah. you're looking for an upper uh, Kurtaman advanced player to uh, join your team, Vivian Wu. <laughs> we'll I see. don't know how well I would do in Kurtaman at the advanced level. I um, Last year I competed at the Princeton tournament and oh my god, my team got crushed. <laughs> ah. <laughs> um, because I, I self-studied the AP exam. Um, I took it when I was taking Latin three at school. Wow. So it was like a huge jump there. Uh, I got a five on the AP. I'm very proud of that. Congratulations. That's, <laughs> um, that's impressive. But, like, I don't know how well I'd do at that national for Kitaman. Well, uh, Eric Ting and Ann Wilson are saying to, they want you to join them. So you've got a team in the making. That's three people right there. Um, so self-studied AP, t- tell us about that. Um, well, I really wanted to take AP Latin this year mm-hmm. just because like, I knew senior year would be a lot and I didn't want to wait until senior year. And also my school doesn't offer AP Latin. So I found myself a tutor and I just learned the whole curriculum. That's amazing. What is the curriculum these days? It's Virgil and Caesar now, right? Yeah. So, um, Back when I took it, it was just Virgil. So uh, it's 50-50 or 60-40. And, and what bits of each do you study? Um, so uh, honestly, it was, <laughs> the minute the AP exam was over, I kind of just like whipped it out of my mind. Um, but it's like, book. I honestly don't even remember. <laughs> this is kind of bad. I wouldn't be able to tell you the numbers of the books. I don't know it that well, but like you know which story elements in the aeneid did you the thing is you have to read the whole thing in english well at least like the first six books i think um in english but mm-hmm. like there were only there were like certain chap certain parts of the books that were re- re- read in latin okay. um so i don't i honestly couldn't tell you i don't remember <laughs> okay didn't mean to put you on the spot and then caesar is is de bello gallico or is it yeah. another work okay Gotcha. So do you, did you have any of the fun things like the fainting deer or the, uh, the other ridiculous wildlife that Caesar talks about? That was Caesar, right? It, the chat's probably going to, you know, crucify me if I'm getting this wrong. It's been a long time since I've read Caesar, you guys, but, um, Oh, okay. They're saying Caesar's books one and six. Okay. Okay. I, I don't remember. I mean, but you studied it and you got a five <laughs> and that's awesome. And this, this was all last year. Yeah. So you were a, a junior, right? Yeah. And what are you doing this year? Um, I'm taking advanced Latin literature. It's kind of just review. I gotcha. So, so which point. authors, who are you studying? Uh, we haven't really gotten into it. We've Because my school, we're really small. We have uh, Latin 3 and advanced Latin literature in like the same class, except we get like split up into groups and we like learn separately, I guess. Um, we just don't have enough kids for a whole class of advanced Latin literature because we're a public school. Um, so right now we're just kind of helping her teach the underclassmen. Well, I guess they're juniors. I guess they're not underclassmen, but they're underclassmen to me. Mm -hmm. Um, so we've been just like teaching them, helping her out because she's, she teaches my Latin teacher at school. She teaches French too. Uh, so, so she has a lot of (laughs) classes. So we just like, we can help you right now, especially since we don't have a test to study for at the end of the year. Gotcha. So when you were just starting out Latin one and two, which career, or which book 
series were you oh, using? Oh, we use Eke Romani. Eke, okay. Usually people will say either Eke or Cambridge, but for a very small amount of time, uh, not like after I graduated, my high school switched to Latin for the New Millennium, which was uh, an interesting series. Um, like they learn indirect statements very early, I think is what it is. Yeah, I don't remember. I'm always trying to pay attention to who's using what curriculum, just purely out of curiosity. Um, Caesar wants to flex about the aliens he found on Mars. Thanks, Eric. <laughs> Great. Well, um, I think we mentioned Kurtam and, and another couple of people joined the stream. So one of the announcements that I did not make uh, in the beginning is that there's going to be a lot of Kurtam and content coming to this channel pretty soon. Uh, either in November or starting in December, we're going to have um, good amounts of Kurtam and programming coming y'all's way. So keep an eye out for that. I think those videos are going to be a big hit uh, and hopefully that'll help grow the channel. Um, of course, if everybody who's in the chat right now wants to text a friend and say, hey, JC Live is happening right now, why don't you get online and you can participate in the chat and talk to Vivian Wu in JCL Historian. That would, of course, help us out very much. Of course, if you can hit the like button on YouTube, that would help us out a lot too. Um, but back to Vivian. So that's that's quite a... Uh, Quite a feat, the self-studying for Latin. Now you're helping teach Latin. Um, this is awesome. Is um, is Latin the first language that you studied? You said you started in ninth grade. Did you take anything in elementary or middle school? Um, we start, I, it, we, I think it's mandatory to start Spanish in like third grade at my school. Um, and then I continued Spanish all the way up until the end of junior year. So I was taking Spanish four and AP Latin at the same time. Um, I ended up actually dropping Spanish this year just because I couldn't fit in my schedule. Um, so I was taking Spanish. I'm not very good at Spanish, for being honest. We've, uh, my family went to Spain, mm -hmm. uh, I think, last summer or something, and my Spanish is so bad. Oh. <laughs> well, you can practice. Um, who was it? It was Annie last week who was talking about how she does so much with Spanish down in Florida. So whenever y'all have um, your national officer meetings, y'all can practice Spanish with each other. Speaking of which, don't we have, isn't fall planning meeting this weekend? Is that coming yeah, up? Yeah, Friday. Yeah. Well, this week, I guess. Are you excited for that? Yeah, I mean, it would have been better if it was in person, but... Yeah, so for those of you in the chat who don't know, fall planning meeting is one of the two meetings where the national committee and the national officers all get together and hang out and uh, conduct a JCL business in person, except this year, uh, the fall planning meeting at least won't be in person. Normally, we go to the university where the National Convention will be held the following July, which will be San Diego State University. Um, but we're not going there, so we're going to do a, a big telethon virtual meeting, basically, this weekend, which will still be fun. The officers get to hang out and become friends, and the National Committee gets to hang out and also become friends and all that. So it'll be a good time. Let's see. Um, so you're the historian. Can you tell us a little bit about your your path to that, your leadership development and your artistic development in JCL? Okay, well, I like since like seventh grade, I'd say I've been kind of into like photography and photo editing and that sort of stuff. I actually went through Skillshare, <laughs> hashtag not spawns, sponsored, um, uh, and I learned how to like edit photos and stuff through Adobe Photoshop. Adobe, yeah, yes, um, and so like. Actually, originally I was running for communication coordinator just because I was really into like website stuff. Mm -hmm. But I kind of got intimidated thinking about how, you know, I'd never taken like a computer science course or anything. So I was like, okay, well, I like photography. I like the like, graphic design sort of stuff. So I was like, historian seems like a pretty good option. Like making the scrapbook seems very exciting at the end of the year. Well, I guess throughout the year. But um, so I ended up switching from communication coordinator to historian. And I ended up actually running unopposed which was <laughs> pretty chill. Uh, I've never actually been a historian before, but I'm like learning a lot along the way and I, I hope to make everyone in JCL proud. <laughs> oh, I'm, I am sure. Um, it's a little bit rare for a historian to be unopposed, but let me tell you, running opposed feels great. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, running unopposed feels great. It's, it's wonderful. Um, so you're, your experience, like you said, started with um, 
photo editing, do you have a lot of experience taking photos also? Yeah, um, my brothers, they were the ones who got into photography before me. And they were like, uh, learning through like YouTube and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I wanted them to teach me but you know, brothers are brothers and they refused to teach me. (laughs) So I ended up having to learn myself. Uh, But I do have my brother's old uh, Canon camera. So it's still a very nice camera. So it's a very, very nice to use. Okay. Um, Now I know one of the things that you are particularly passionate about for this year is um, a video scrapbook contest. Could you tell us about that? Um, So one of like the major things that I was trying to promote during my campaign was a video scrapbook at the end of the year, uh, which is just going to be like a compilation of videos. You can submit um, the video of the month winners will be featured in the video scrapbook at the end of the year. Um, and I was thinking, it was just, you know, go alongside the, uh, the regular scrapbook every year. And I was like, well, we have a photo of the month contest. And since I'm trying to do a video scrapbook, uh, why not have a video of the month contest? Uh, it's going to run just like the photo of the month. It's going to open next month in November. Uh, submissions will be similar. It will be through a Google form that will be linked on the website. It's a max one minute video you can submit. TikToks are welcome as long as you have like permission from the people in the video uh, to submit it. They're great as long as they're like appropriate. <laughs> you know, you like... If you submit a random dance video that has nothing to do with JCL, I, you're not you're not going to win, <laughs> just for the record. But um, anything JCL related, any videos, you can like screen record Zoom meetings. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's fun. Uh, do you, I, I imagine that when this starts, you're going to get nothing but TikTok videos at first. <laughs> Probably. Do you know? And I'm okay with that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. I'm glad you are. Um I have to be, you know, old and grumpy and talk disparagingly about TikTok, but really, I mean, it's a it's a social media platform that people are using, so it's worth looking into. It's worth considering. Um, do you have a TikTok yourself? Do you use it? I don't make videos. I just watch them. Gotcha. Okay, we've got a question. How does a chapter uh, or JCL save a video scrapbook to submit, or is it not a whole scrapbook? Oh, not a whole scrapbook. They're just little, they're just like up to one minute videos. Oh, so they send you videos and then you're going to make a video scrapbook. Yeah. At the end of the year. Okay. Mm-hmm. Tell everyone you know Kurt wants to see more TikTok. Well, I have seen TikTok videos. I've got some friends who will say, oh, you've got to check this out. Uh, do you see, so you said you um, sometimes watch those. Are there any like good classics themed ones that you see? Like funny ones about Not Greece or Rome? Not a lot. There are like mythology ones that you see, um, but nothing that, that shows up on my For You page. Okay. If I'm being honest, I'm not like going on TikTok and searching Latin or like classics and stuff like that. It's just kind of whatever I end up liking, which is a lot of cat videos. <laughs> Um, so yeah gotcha yeah that's some of the most wholesome content that uh, comes up on my facebook these days is uh it's a page called happy cats that i follow that's just nothing but but cute pictures of cats and kittens and it's great it's so much better than most of the other stuff that's on my newsfeed these days so uh happy cats let's see yeah mythology is always more popular um Ann Wilson says, I know I've seen spoken Latin and spoken Greek TikToks. Okay. So I was going to say, if it's not out there, then that means there's a, uh, a niche for somebody in our audience if you want to go and make them. Uh, if they exist already, then um, I'm sure a JCLer could do them better. Just saying. So uh, that could be that could be an opportunity. Um, let us see. So video scrapbook. Um, and of course, we can publish a video scrapbook on YouTube, or we can publish it on the Jumag site that we use, or um, do you have a, an idea for what platform you want to use or what software you want to use to compile it or something like that? I was originally just going to do like post it on YouTube and then like link it in the regular scrapbook, kind of like as an extension. Okay. Yeah, we can absolutely do that. We um, Last year when Nationals was virtual, we had the uh, compilations of like graphic arts winners and some creative arts 
so there, these were two videos. There was a graphic arts compilation video and a creative arts compilation videos, and those were, bi I think, big hits. So um, something like that. But from these contests throughout the year, that's a cool idea. That is a cool idea. Uh, what other plans do you have for the year other than the video scrapbook contest? Right now, I mean, right now what's overwhelming me is just college apps. Mm. So uh, I've been just trying to finish those. I'm trying to finish those before November, see if you know, I can focus on school, JCL, and stuff like that. Um, right now, all I've been really thinking about is trying to get this video scrap, videos, video of the month contest, like, like out and people are submitting. Um, I'm kind of worried that nobody's really going to submit just because like we don't get a lot of photo of the month as it is right now. Um, so video of the month, I don't know how many we'll get, but hopefully through more promotion, we'll get a lot, <laughs> especially since TikToks are allowed. Um, yes, I imagine that'll be then, it. Yeah. Okay. And of course we will promote these, all these contests on social media. So you don't have to, those of you in the chat, you don't have to worry about, um, writing it down necessarily or, or remembering the link. Cause we'll post, you know, when it gets to be the end of the month, we'll say either on JC live or we'll say on Instagram or something photo of the month, do soon video of the month, do it, do it now. Um, good. Okay, I just thought of a question that I should have been asking all of the national officers as we've been doing this these interviews, but I just thought of it, so you're going to be the first. Um, what advice would you have for a freshman JCL or somebody, uh, a middle schooler or somebody in Latin one? Like, let's say they, they've started Latin and they're in the eighth grade or they're in the ninth grade and they're just getting into JCL. Um, what, what advice would you have for them? Don't be scared. I, I know when I first started, I was very scared of everything just because, you know, I didn't know anyone before, but everyone is so welcoming. They'll support you, like, no matter what you do. Um, and just try everything. Like, you never know what you'll be good at, what you'll enjoy. Uh, I remember taking those contests, those like those written academic contest thing at nationals. And I if I'm being honest, I didn't love them, <laughs> but it was like a fun experience. And it was something I was able to do with my friends that I made that year. Um, and honestly, I should have tried open Kirtama in that year. It's just, I, I wish I had looking back, but you know, hopefully the future generation of JCLers will learn from my mistake and take those leaps, you know, don't be scared. Thank you. That's a wonderful answer. And I'm going to pose the same question for everybody in the chat. If you had, uh, what advice would you have for somebody who's just getting started in JCL and has four or five years ahead of them? And the advice should be something other than study really hard for Kataman, because I think people already know that. Okay, so while those answers are coming in, um, let's talk a little bit more about you and your your hobbies and things you do for fun. So you said in your intro letter to the committee that you play the violin the oboe the harp and the piano wow <laughs> which we we already did a um nolan who's you know the communications coordinator we already did a thumbnail for him where he is playing many instruments or we talked about how he plays many instruments but you also play a bunch of instruments we've got all these multi-talented uh jcl officers so how did you get into all of these instruments okay well when I was like second grade, first grade, I I just learned piano because my brothers were learning piano. Um, I don't play very much, at least anymore. Um, I'm trying to get back into it. It's just like the two the two hands are kind of complicated, <laughs> you know. Um, I, I like know like the general stuff. Like I can play a couple songs. It's just I'm not amazing at piano. Um, uh, violin's been my like main instrument since like second grade i'd say uh i've been i went to the msm pre-college which is manhattan school of music um in manhattan uh for a while and then i quit because high school got a little bit too much um but it was it was fun i really do enjoy the violin and i've been playing it for a very long time so i don't really plan on quitting anytime soon <laughs> um i learned harp at a summer camp a couple years ago. Uh, we had like a choice to learn, like take a random course or something. And I chose harp. Um, it was 
it's amazing. <laughs> the harp is actually insane. Um, there are like pedals on the floor where what? you can like make it sharp or flat because the actual strings are only natural notes. So in order to get the sharps and flats, you have to like use the pedals um, and make it either sharp or flat to play the notes. So it was really, <laughs> I had no idea. I thought it's kind of like piano, but harder. <laughs> but with piano, like each uh, accidental gets its own button key. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea that it was a, a foot pedal that you use for the harp. Wow. Okay. So I, you wish, gotten... I, hmm? I wish I played the harp still. Um, the harps are very expensive. Yeah. <laughs> It's very expensive. So have so, you gotten a chance to do any of that since that summer camp? Uh, I, I was planning on renting a harp for a while, uh, but no. Okay. <laughs> no. Um, I played oboe for a while. Uh, I actually recently returned the oboe. Um, it's It was very hard to pick up mm. because it's a double reed instrument, and the reed has to be like sort of moist <laughs> um in order to get the notes correctly and that took me a long time to figure out um and then they're like the buttons and stuff but the buttons aren't that complicated mm -hmm. uh, it's mostly the reed yeah the oboe I, I like to refer to the oboe as everyone's favorite double reeded instrument that can be played at less than 100 decibels so not the bagpipes and also sorry bassoons not the bassoon yeah gotcha we are, by the way, we're getting some tremendous advice from the chat. Uh, get out of your comfort zone to make friends with JCLers across the country. I'm an introvert and used to be really shy, but I forced myself to get out of my comfort zone to make friends. Uh, think about leadership and giving back to the organization. Uh, bring snacks to share with friends. Um, all those kinds of things. So really, really good advice from the folks in the chat who are sound like some JCL veterans. Awesome. Um, that is a very specific nickname. Oh, yeah, for oboe, it's everyone's favorite double-reeded instrument that can be played for less than 100 decibels. That just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Um, another thing to talk about, Vivian, is um, another one of your hobbies, according to your intro letter to the, uh, the committee, is that you are, quote, an avid stationary fiend. Your words, <laughs> not mine. So uh, tell us about that. Um, I just like stationery. It's it's very exciting to like order a stationery and to get it in the mail. <laughs> um, a lot of the times I'll order it and then I'll be like, oh my god, this is too special. I can't I can't write in it. So I just have like stacks of notebooks <laughs> and like um, like notepad just sitting in my closet. Um, but like Muji, Muji is like my go to. I was so sad when they um, when they what's it called filed for bankruptcy in July. Oh. Um, they're doing fine. <laughs> you can still buy from them. It was just, it was very shocking because I, I love their stuff, their pens, their notebooks. I I have, I usually take my notes on an iPad now, but when I do take notes on paper, Muji notebooks all the way. <laughs> the paper is very high quality. They're not too expensive. And I don't know, they're just really great. They're like, because Japanese stationery, if I'm being um, stationary, if I'm being completely honest, is better <laughs> than American stationery. Um, the paper is better, the pens are better, everything's just kind of better there. Uh, but Japanese stationery is very expensive to get here. But Muji, they make it. They make it great. <laughs> How do you spell that? M-U-J-I. Okay. I had never heard of them. But cool. Stationery recommendations. I was recently lectured about the uh, folly of putting a white colored envelope in a I'm sorry, a white colored invitation in a cream colored envelope. <laughs> I, I just bought the cream colored envelopes because I thought like, oh, it's it's off white. It's fancier. But no, it turns out. Do you have any any stationary tips like that to avoid to help people avoid making a mistake like that? Honestly, like getting like plain stationary is a very good idea, like nothing too ornate, but like plain stationary that you can reuse, um, like getting like plain cards that you can just like like plain empty cards that you can like draw and decorate and like personalize for your friends for like birthdays for like holidays or stuff. I feel like that's the best option. Okay. Well, and when you go to buy stationery, like what, what are you looking for? Like when you go to buy sheets, you're looking for things like thread count. Like when you go to buy stationery, what are the metrics that you use? 
Is it just what um, looks nice, feels nice, or is there some kind of number associated with it? A lot of the times I'm buying stationery offline, like off in the internet. Um, so you kind of just have to research a little about like what other people say about the paper and stuff. Because without actually feeling it, it's kind of hard to know. Um, and you also have to figure out like how rough or smooth the paper you like <laughs> you want is. Um, the Muji paper is very smooth, which I like because it's like very easy to write. It's very effortless to write on, especially when you're like taking really fast notes during class. Um, I like, I don't know what else, like you have to figure out like which size the, um, what's it called? The lines are like whether they're college ruled, wide ruled. I don't know who uses wide, wide ruled or why they make it, but college ruled is so much better. Just like, that's a fact. You cannot argue with me on that. It's a fact. Um, but other than that, I can't really. Oh, also, spiral notebooks kind of suck. That's it. Oh, yeah. Now, now, my personal favorite kind of paper, you're probably going to hate this, is when I went to college, um, I was an engineering student, right? So I'd go to the engineering club meetings, the, the chemical engineering society meetings, and these companies would come and talk about themselves and you know try and convince us to apply and go work there after we graduated and they would always give us pads of engineering paper which is grid paper so it's like imagine um horizontal lines with the spacing of college ruled but then also vertical lines with that same spacing so it's a grid and it's great for you know drawing xy plots and drawing you know um diagrams and everything like that but it's that spacing um and oh i got it i got so many pads of engineering paper for free it's great have you ever used grid paper um i used to swear by grid paper just because like it's easier to use um like i'll get like a big thing of it and then i'll just like use it for all my classes because like math and science you'll have to gra graph stuff sometimes um but dotted paper like um bullet bullet journals you know bullet journals are like, they were a trend for a while like to bullet journal instead of use planners um they're like dots instead of the full lines so like at each i guess intersection it, um there will be a dot and i feel like it just makes the paper look more clean than grid okay cool i've never heard of that ever before in my life but it sounds more attractive than something that's you know, a grid and then has marathon petroleum written in large letters across the top. <laughs> Every sheet has, you know, the company logo on it. Um, Andrew Barth says, how is everyone so knowledgeable about stationery? I feel enlightened. This is, this is fun. I mean, thank you for bringing, that's one of the cool things about the national officers is, and, and all JCLers is they've always got these amazing hobbies that you've never heard of before, but then we can all talk about it and learn something. And it's a ton of fun. Um, and Riona says, I feel like I'm missing out because I haven't gotten into stationery, but, but now you know something about stationery, you know, uh, you know, Vivian's favorite kind of stationery. Uh, yeah. We should pose the question for the chat, um, to be more interactive. Do y'all have any kind of favorite stationery? Um, it sounds like there's already been some discussion going on. People are talking about their favorite kind of pencils. Are Muji pens good too, or do you have a different brand for your favorite pens? Martina asks you, Vivian. Okay, um, for, okay, <laughs> you don't want to get me started on this because I'll keep going forever, but for their ballpoint pens, the Muji ones are really good, but if you're looking for like a gel pen, the, um, the Pentel, the Pentel, Pentel, I don't know how to pronounce it, where is it? I don't know where it went, oh, the Pentel Energel liquid ones in point, oh, point five, or, uh, oh, five, point five, I don't know. 0.5 millimeters the best pen the best pen <laughs> okay i know no, people like the g2 ones but they like the, gel in my opinion. Yeah. the g2 pens mm. i don't know um but the needle tip energel 0.5 millimeter pens are the best gosh i'm looking around at my desk and all i have is boring generic pens i do have one fancy pen <laughs> ah whatever we do have one kind of serious question um and then yeah, so um, Ms. Susan Shearer asks, uh, Vivian, what do you think the NJCL historian should be recording for posterity? 
for this year, I think it's very important to record what people are doing despite COVID, despite social distancing, because I think it's very important to show that we're like we've been stuck at home, but we haven't lost our JCL spirit. We're, we're we still have the JC love for everything we do, and um, I think like all the screenshots of Zooms and like just photos of people wearing masks and like doing like drive-in sorts of things are are like perfect ways to kind of record what we've been doing that's keeping our spirits high, you know? And especially the 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 virtual the virtual convention too and JC Live. JC Live is a great um way, like a great thing that we've done this year to kind of you know circumvent the issues that we've had. <laughs> I like to think so. I do wish uh, more people would take advantage. So Tell all your friends, JC Live. We'll be we'll be back next week with uh, the science panel, like we talked about. It'll be a very good time. Thank you very much, Vivian. Miss Susan Shearer says, "Okay, um, we are we've got a couple of minutes left, and then Vivian, um, you'll feel, you'll be free to go. We've got a, a lightning round, so we've got several questions for you to answer." Lindy asks, uh, "Do you like mild liners? I don't know what that is." Uh, the mild liner highlight highlighter. Yes, I love them. Um, I actually got the brush pens recently. They're not great. They're a little like stiff, but they're fine. Um, fine. You've, you've got an opinion on all these. This is great. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Somebody else had a question. Favorite font? Andrew Barth asks. Times New Roman. Is there, is there any other font you could like? I don't know. This chat has some strong opinions about uh, favorite fonts. Chat, why don't you go ahead and tell us your favorite fonts? Um, Andrew asked that again. Let's see. Times New Roman 1.15 spaced. I'm sorry, your boy B. I'm 1.15 is better. All right. Strong opinions being thrown out here. Um, there were other questions. Other questions. How is everyone so knowledgeable about stationery? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, okay. Turns out there were not... Isn't a piano just a harp with legs and tipped over? That's a that's a hot take. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's see. We're getting bitter as a favorite font. That came up last time. Uh, Arial. Soviet program. Never heard of that one. Garamond Helvetica. I used to use one whenever I was, whenever I didn't know anything at all about fonts or anything like that and i was trying to make a publication for my school like a, a jcl uh, newsletter i used a font called matrix bold small caps for the uh the title only matrix but, bold small caps yeah oh my god it was Did a you like download headline. this off oh. a website yeah i just found it somewhere and uh this was this was a long time ago so uh you know fonts were not as I guess in for freshman or sophomore year uh, of high school, I didn't know anything about any of that. So y'all are all much more uh, up to speed on that than I am. Okay, Vivian, um, I think with that, you're good to go. Thanks so much for being on the show. We're going to bring on the, the other two national officers now. We will see you in a couple of weeks whenever it's your turn to give an officer report. Is there anything, any last minute stuff you wanted to say to the chat before we go? Um. Submit to photo and video of the month. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much. You've been a great guest. We will see you next time. All right. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Talk to you later. Bye. Okay. One second, everybody. One second. I am going to, I'm going to get all the national officers in this chat. Let's see. Um, Rice, are you there? Can you hear me? Hey, Mr. Ristroff. Hey, how's it going? Pretty good, pretty good. How are you? Awesome. I'm good. We've just had a very nice discussion with Vivian about, uh, among other things, stationery. Everybody's got an opinion on their favorite pens and papers and everything else. And um, and I was very wrong for putting a white invitation in a uh, cream-colored envelope. So, you know. Opinions were flying. It was fun. It was a good time. Uh, anyway, let me um, let me make it so everybody can see you. And the name placards are even lined up properly. Wonderful. <laughs>
because sometimes they get swapped. Anyway, everybody, please welcome to the show NJCL First Vice President Rais Kambaj and NJCL Second Vice President Lindy Raining. Uh, how are y'all doing today? Fabulous. Awesome. Glad to hear it. Good. Good, good. Well, um, like I said, we're doing the format a little bit different. We had announcements at the beginning with our guest, then we had the feature, and now we're having we're going to close with officer reports. So, what have you got for us, uh, Rais? Why don't you go first? Okay, so I'll be sharing my screen. Okay, I think we're set up for that. Cool. Can uh, can you see this, Mr. Roth? I sure can. Okay. So this is an article that I found that kind of resonates with me since I'm very involved in the theater scene in my school and my local community. So it's called, Can Greek Tragedy Get Us Through the Pandemic? So the general gist of this article is there, that there's this theater group called Theater of War Productions. And they're more than just a, a group that puts on plays. They tend to make their um, productions of Greek tragedies very modern by incorporating elements of social activism, such as um, using like Black Lives Matter or making plays about, or reworking plays into messages about how gun violence is a problem or how drug addiction is actually crippling our societies. So um, I don't know if anyone recognizes this right here, but this is Oscar Isaac from uh, Star Wars fame. So this, is, this uh, organization has some pretty big names in the theater and even film communities. So the part I wanted to really highlight was how, what they're doing currently. So let me just scroll, let me see, let me see. Okay. So because of, of course, the pandemic, theater has been really hard to move to a virtual format, but the Theater of War Productions has actually managed to host online like zoom theatrical performances where they like change their names on zoom to match their characters they have kind of minimalistic costumes and it's all dependent on their facial expressions as opposed to their whole body movement and so what their main uh claim to fame right now is is having a production of oedipus rex or oedipus the king where the main focus is on not the struggle of Oedipus, but really the subtle context that Sophocles managed to weave in there about the plague of Athens, which now ties in perfectly to modern day times with the current coronavirus pandemic, which is keeping us all indoors. So, in addition to just uh, Oedipus Rex, they've been put, they've put on uh, Ajax, Philosophies, Antigone, and many other plays in order to kind of keep the spirit of theater alive, as well as give their very serious messages through a medium that almost anyone can enjoy. So I found that to be pretty nice. Of course, as a theater kid myself, I might be a little biased, but... I think it's a great endeavor. Interesting stuff. Well, thank you for sharing. This is a, an article from The New Yorker. So the name of it is Can Greek Tragedy Get Us Through the Pandemic? If you want to go check that out. The name of the group is Theater of War Productions. Riona Duncan in the chat says, I've gone to some Theater of War Productions on Zoom and they're so good. So that's that's fun. That's, oh, um, that's some interesting epic. theater stuff. It's always good to see those uh, stop old... Stop sharing right now. Oh. It's always good to see those things um, reimagined. That's um, part of how we interpret and reinterpret classics. Fun stuff. Thank you for sharing. Lindy, it's your turn. How are you All doing? right. Um, as you kind of covered a lot of my stuff earlier, Mr. Ristroff, but just to reiterate, in the chat earlier, I put the Google form for the Club of the Month submissions. They're due on the last day of the month. And we're accepting September and October submissions on the last day of October. Um, so we'll release winners for both of those months. Um, and like he said, it does not have to be strictly on theme. It's really up to you and your club. 
and any submission will be given due um, attention and go, you know, uh, um, look at. So don't be scared to submit it, even if you think maybe it's not um, what the best your club could have done, because any submission will be, you know, greatly appreciated. So I look forward to looking through them all. I hope everyone will submit them. Like um, Mr. Restroff said earlier, October is Outdoors October. So if you can get outside and, you know, Zoom with your club, then um, we'd love to see that. If you can't, that's cool too. Cool. Well, thank you very much. Uh, can you give us a teaser for the theme for November? November is New Club November. And so I'm really encouraging new clubs to um, – submit so that way we can recognize people who have joined within the past couple of years it doesn't have to be just this year or anything but um a new club and old clubs that reach out and help new clubs so it's recognizing both it's not just one or the other wonderful wholesome stuff wholesome stuff so i asked vivian earlier uh, what makes a winning photo of the month what makes a winning club of the month submission would you say um well i guess uh spirit which sounds kind of weird um not actual spirit the competition or the event spirit as in your club just shows a sense of community a sense of um what it means to have jc uh, love um really anything like that um will count i just want to see a club where it's obvious that they enjoy what they're doing and that um they're reaching as many people as possible awesome awesome wonderful uh, before we end, I wanted to ask, did either of the two of you make it to the Massachusetts Classics Day last weekend? Yes, I did. And might I say, it was pretty great. That's there cool. was, I actually found the guest speakers to be really informative. From the Nobel Prize um, laureate to the um, congresswoman, it was very I think it was just really inspiring seeing how classics influence how like their career paths as different as they may seem, but they're kind of like united by this one love. Yeah, I was able to go to, and um, they had a lot of uh, good lecture series and they had a lot of just fun little events. I know they did like a Kahoot. I did categories. I know they also did like trivia of some sort. So they did like, I don't know if it's strictly trivia, it might've been family feud, but they did a whole bunch of different than just fun social events, which was really nice. Awesome. Awesome. I unfortunately wasn't able to make it that day. Um, let's see, Riona Duncan in the chat also said mass classics day was great. Madeline Miller was so cool. That's, that's wonderful. I'm really glad to hear about that. I'm sure we'll be getting a recap or something of, uh, that in the upcoming torch us. I hope that the Massachusetts folks, uh, write about that or somebody wants to if if somebody who went wants to write a um an op-ed for the torch us and submit that to njcl editor uh irene calderon at editor at njcl.org i'm sure she'd be thrilled to get a submission that goes for the two of you too if you're interested um yeah so that's um that's wonderful thanks to massachusetts for hosting that again i'm sorry i couldn't make it but uh, i'm glad that everybody who did was able to well, with that, that's our show, folks. It's been about an hour. Uh, thanks so much for being in the audience. Thanks so much to the two of you for being here for uh, our officer reports at the end. Again, join us next week. We'll be doing our first panel discussion from JCL to science. We've got some really awesome scientists who are going to come on and talk about their lives and their career trajectories. All of them have been in JCL. One of them's a former uh, state president. One of them's a former national officer. So some really nice... Um, really well experienced uh folks who really um were really into jcl in high school and um have then transitioned to this science career it's going to be fun to talk to them uh we'll see you in a week tell all your friends be sure to like and subscribe it really helps the channel if you want to leave a comment down below that will also help us out with the algorithm on youtube and everything um again thanks so much and we'll see you this time next week cheers everybody have a good one